Hey, do you ever wonder why you gain fat or why you can't lose the fat that you have around your belly or wherever you have your fat? In this video, I want to talk about the metabolic process that helps you accumulate fat and helps you to stay fat. So stick with me uh, in this video because I'll, I'll try and break it down a little bit for you in a few minutes. So. Um, the reason that we put on fat might be a little bit different for everyone, but there's a similar metabolic process and there's three things that happen. So first of all, we have, uh, when we ingest carbohydrates or when we have glucose, our body elicits um, the release of hor a hormone called insulin. Most of you have heard about insulin. Now, insulin speeds up the uptake of that glucose and it either stores it as, um, it favors the storage as glycogen or triglycerols. And then that storage process will inhibit the use of the stored fat that you already have. So basically when you have the presence of insulin, you're not gonna be mobilizing your own fat stores. So let me break it down just a little bit more. So how do we get glucose in our blood? Well, when we ingest carbohydrates, um, that's when our body releases insulin. So let me preface that by saying that carbs are not bad. We do not want to not have carbs. Uh, our body needs carbs for a multitude of processes, uh, first of which is brain function. Our, our brain can only um, function on carbohydrate. So any type of carbs that we eat will elicit a, an insulin response. And now insulin isn't bad either. Insulin is really just a delivery vehicle because our body likes homeostasis. We don't wanna have uh, sugar in our blood. So then insulin gets pumped out to do a couple things. Now there's three things that insulin will do. If you are active, that blood glucose or blood sugar is gonna be used for immediate energy. If you're not active, then what will happen is uh, your body will see, do I need, uh, does the liver need stored energy? Do, do muscles need store it, stored energy? So then the blood glucose will either be used for immediate energy or be stored in the muscle or liver as glycogen. So let's say your muscle and liver is topped up with glycogen, your body says, well, we're gonna save this energy for a rainy day and it gets turned into fat. So that's how fat storage happens. And we often have a surplus of energy. In fact, we're eating more than, we, than we're expending or the timing of our food is such that we were not making it favorable for us to either be utilizing the energy right away or we're making it easy for our body to store that energy in the form of fat. So, um, the body just is going to store that extra fat. And so just to keep in mind that when we have uh, insulin circulating around, we just will not be using our own body fat stores. It, it favors storage of fat instead of mobilization of fat. So we really wanna be able to control our insulin levels. So, and oftentimes we, when we have increased insulin levels over time, we become insulin resistance, which means that now we have uh, elevated insulin uh, levels on the regular, which makes it even harder to release that body fat. So, so what's the answer? The answer is determined fundamentally by the food that we eat, the carbohydrates that we eat. So there's a couple tricks to eating that car eating carbohydrate. For example, not eating carbohydrates in exclusively will slow down our insulin production. So if we eat carbohydrates in the presence of fats and protein, we don't get a spike in insulin. We get more of a the rolling hills of of, you know, because we need insulin. Insulin isn't bad. Uh, it, like I said, insulin is just a storage, um, you know, delivery, sorry, a delivery vehicle. So when we have glucose in our blood, 
we just don't want to have a, um, a ton of it so we get a spike of insulin. We just want to have kind of rolling hills of a little bit of insulin and then it comes down and then a little bit of insulin. So the way we can do that is by moderating our carbohydrate intake by having it with a bit of fat or protein. Um, but basically the more carbs we eat, especially exclusive carbs, uh, the higher our insulin levels and the higher our insulin levels, typically the more fat will either accumulate or the we will not be able to utilize our stored fat. So ultimately what we want to find is the right balance between how many carbs, how much protein, how much fat we should be eating so that we can still mobilize the fat that we've accumulated, use that fat as energy. So there's lots of tips and tricks. You do not have to starve the fat off. You do not have to not eat carbs. In fact, I've become leaner than ever. My clients are becoming leaner by eating carbs, but it's a matter of the quality and quantity of carbs and the timing of carbs. So there's a couple tips and tricks. It's not as complicated as it might sound. I know a lot of people just get overwhelmed with the whole idea of like, maybe I just shouldn't be eating carbs at all. I have clients that are just like stupefied in terms of not even knowing what to eat because, oh, fat makes you fat, carbs make you fat. Um, how much protein can I eat? Well, okay, that's keto. Well, I've heard good and bad things about that. Everything gets so confusing. So if you need some help, if you need some direction, uh, you know, go to uh, you know, a source that you, that you trust, that you can have a good conversation with, and oh, by the way, I'm that person, especially if you're women, a woman over 40, just DM me, I'm happy to help. So that's how we store fat. That's how it's difficult for us to mobilize the stored fat that we have. It's all about our insulin levels. It's not necessarily about our menopause uh, hormones. A lot of times people just think it's, you know, uh, menopause brought this on. No, it's our eating. It's our behavior, it's our lifestyle, and we can change it, and we don't have to starve. So hope that helps. We'll see you next time.